Thank you for joining us today. It's our prayer that we will be a blessing to you and that you will learn more about the Word of God. There's no way for any of us to learn too much about the Word of God. I would like to read from Luke chapter 22, and I'm going to read verses 15 and 16. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. I'll talk more about that in my message today. But right now, Miss Faye is going to pray for us. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you today for you're holy, you're merciful, and you're mighty. And we thank you for your word that is alive and that it endures forever. We thank you for the privilege to come into your presence. We ask for your anointing upon us as we share. We ask for your anointing upon each one that's listening that they'll receive from this word exactly what they need to go through this day. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen. Amen and amen. I want to let you know that we operate our church services over the phone. And so if we are a blessing to you today and you would like to hear more of us as we teach and preach the Word of God, if you will call at the end of this program, we will tell you how you can attend our services right from your home every Sunday and every Wednesday. So keep that in mind. But right now we want to emphasize the importance of studying the Bible. It's the Word of God, and it will help us to build our faith so that we can receive the blessings that God wants us to have. Amen. 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 Last week when we left off, we were talking about what you and I will experience when we get to heaven some of the things that we'll be involved in. And one of the major things that we will be getting to do is to worship Almighty God. If you will recall, John had been caught up in the Spirit and was able to enter into heaven in the Spirit and see the things that were happening there. So he was able to write about those things and that helps us to know what we will experience and what we will get to participate in once we get to heaven. Now, again, he was very, very impressed with the kind of worship that was going on there in heaven with all of those who were gathered around the throne of God, bowing before him and offering up praise and worship to him. We will actually get to do that. Won't it be exciting to kneel before our heavenly father and also before our Lord Jesus Christ and get to offer up praise and thanksgiving and worship to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, there's a great event that's going to take place and we'll definitely get to participate in that great event. And it's called the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. And this will occur after we have been entered into heaven We will have seen God, we will have seen Jesus, and we will get to be married to Jesus. And that's exciting. Now, through faith, we already are one with Jesus, and Jesus is one with us. But the actual ceremony, so to speak, will take place after we get into heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. Miss Faye's going to read about this from the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verses 1 and then 6 through 9, Miss Faye. Revelation 19, verse 1. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Verse 6. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, 
for the fine linen is the righteousness of, of saints. And he said to me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. Now, this marriage supper of the Lamb is one of the things that Jesus was referring to in the scripture that I read at the beginning of this program, where he said, I want to eat with you of this Passover here and now, but I will not do it again until we're in heaven together. And that was a reference to the fact that the marriage supper of the Lamb would be taking place once we're in heaven. Now, we know that Jesus is going to be the bridegroom. No question about that. But Miss Faye has just read some verses that describe the bride of Christ. And that's exciting. How that the righteousness that the saints have will make it possible for them to be robed in white like that of a bride. Well, to get a maybe clearer understanding of this marriage and the bridegroom and the bride, I'm going to ask Miss Faye to read some scripture from Ephesians that talk about husband and wife here on earth and that relationship, and then we will see how that carries over into heaven for the marriage supper of the Lamb. So, Miss Faye, if you'll read from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 through 33, please. Ephesians 5, beginning verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so that the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. And so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. So Miss Fay has just read some verses that tell about the relationship between a husband and wife here on earth, how that both are to love each other, they are to submit to each other, they are to work together as if they are one. And the writer says that's the way it's going to be whenever we enter into heaven and the marriage supper of the Lamb takes place, we will be united as one with the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the head, we are the body. We make up members of the body of Christ. And we are known in these verses of Scripture as the church. That is, we are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ who accepted Him while on earth as our Lord and as our Savior. And we committed ourselves even at while the, we were on earth that we would love Him and that we would allow His love to fill us and to bring us closer and closer and closer to Him so that whenever we do get to get into heaven, be it by way of the grave or by the rapture, we will be at this point called the marriage supper of the Lamb united with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this is going to take place in heaven and whenever we were studying about the five wise virgins, we learned that they had their lamps all trimmed and burning and they were ready to go in with the bridegroom. Well, 
We are the saints of God. We are the church. And we are able to enter in when, when Jesus calls us up to meet him in the air or if we should go by way of the grave. We will be present, all of us, if we're believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, whenever this marriage supper of the Lamb takes place and he will eat with us again. Talking about a party, it's really going to be an awesome party. Now then I want to talk about the term marriage and marriage supper that Miss Fay read about in Revelation 19. It's related to the Jewish marriage customs in Bible times. We find that there were three major steps that were involved in the Jewish marriages. The first step was the betrothal, the establishment of the marriage covenant that bound the man and the woman together as husband and wife. They, whenever we would call it engagement took place, it was as serious as if they had already been bound together in the ceremony of marriage. But whenever Jesus makes a promise, he keeps it. And that's what he has done for us. He has promised us that by our believing in him and asking him to come into our hearts and lives, that he will be married to us and with us. Miss Fay, let's go to Malachi chapter 2 and verse 14, please. Malachi 2, verse 14. Yet you say, Wherefore? Because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. So the bride is the church, and Jesus has made a covenant with us that we will enter into heaven with him whenever the rapture takes place or if we go before that time, we still will be in heaven with him and then the time will come during the seven-year period that we will actually be in heaven wherever heaven is at this point in time. Now, there's more to the story than what I'm telling you at this point, so don't go away. There's more excitement to come. But anyway, Jesus has made a covenant with us and hopefully we have accepted that covenant and declared it to be our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Miss Fay, let's go to Matthew now, chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Matthew chapter 1, beginning verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Now, I put these verses of Scripture in here to show you that it's Jesus' desire to be married to us, the believers, the church, the saints. And with that commitment that Jesus has made to us, he will not turn his back upon us. He will keep us in the palm of his hand. He will keep us in his heart as long as we keep him in our heart. Just as Joseph did not turn his back on Mary, neither will Jesus ever turn away from us. If any turning is done, it would be us away from him. But God forbid that that ever happen. Rather than our turning away from him, we need to desire to draw closer and closer and closer. Now, the commitment has already been made, and it's just as binding as if the marriage supper of the Lamb had already taken place. So the marriage supper of the Lamb will be the ceremony. It will be the, the official declaring that we are united one with the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. So this is going to take place when we get to heaven at some point during the time that we are there. And again, I will talk more about what's going to happen on down the road. 
Right now, Miss Faye, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2, please. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 2 says, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So we are to make that commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ just as he has made the commitment to us. And again, it's just as binding, or at least it should be, just as binding as if the marriage ceremony had already taken place. We are to give our all to the Lord Jesus Christ, spirit, soul, and body, because Jesus has already given himself to us and for us so that we can be united as one with him. Now, that was the first step. That was the commitment being made. The second step was the taking of the bride or wife by the groom from her house to the father's house. This is interesting to me. The wedding was in the Jewish way of doing things was to take place at the father's house. Miss Faye, John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3, please. John 14, beginning verse 2. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Those are familiar verses of Scripture. And again, Jesus is saying, I am going to receive you from where you are into my presence, and together we will enter into the Father's house. I've already gone there. I've prepared everything that's necessary for the wedding to take place. And so I will catch you away, or if your spirit is already in heaven, it will be reunited with your glorified body. We who are alive and remain here on earth at that catching away will be glorified as well. And so we will enter into heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the Father's house. Hallelujah. And it's there that the marriage supper of the Lamb will take place. Miss Faye, let's go to Psalm 45, verse 14, please. Psalm 45, 14. She shall be brought forth unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that shall follow her, shall be brought unto thee. So remember the description that Miss Fay read from the book of Revelation about how beautifully the bride is going to look whenever she enters in for the wedding to take place. And in the verse that Fay just read, it says that the companions or the bridesmaid will accompany her in for the wedding. So we talked about the five wise virgins earlier. Uh, in fact, we went much into detail several weeks ago in describing what was going to take place. Now, this taking of the bride was usually done at night approximately one year after the engagement had taken place. Now, some people here on earth get married just almost instantly after they meet each other. But in the Jewish custom, usually it was a period of a year that they waited from the time that they first committed to each other before they actually got married. So the marriage ceremony was carried out once the couple, the bridal party, got to the father's house. So probably right after the rapture takes place, that's when the wedding ceremony is going to begin and the marriage supper of the Lamb will take place. And you know there is no limit on how long that ceremony and that party, that, that ceremony is going to take, how long it will be. Possibly the seven years that we are in heaven before returning back to earth. And I'll talk more about that at a later point. But in harmony the, with this custom, the marriage supper of the Lamb must begin shortly after 
Christ takes his bride, that is the church, and they get into the Father's house uh, following their entrance there. The marriage will occur. The marriage, of course, involves the co uh, consummation of the marriage through physical union of the bride and the groom. Now, that's here on earth. We understand that. But there will be a united uh, of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ with the head, which is Jesus Christ. So right now, right now, we are already one with Jesus. But when we enter into heaven with him, it will be a genuine union that will be forever and forever from that point on. We will be in a glorified form just as Jesus is. Remember when he arose he took on a glorified form. Well, we will do exactly the same. Let's say John chapter 3, verse 2. John 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when we, he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now listen to this statement. After the marriage was consummated, the groom announced, we're talking about Jewish custom, the groom announced the consummation to his friends who were standing outside the bridal chamber. Well, whenever we are united as one with the Lord Jesus Christ officially through the marriage supper of the Lamb, there will be rejoicing all over heaven all of the people who are there will join in the party. There will be excitement. There will, I'm sure, be singing. There will be dancing. Just, it'll be a grand and glorious time whenever it's made official that the church has become the union, a united body with the Lord Jesus Christ. Miss Faye, what is Psalm 19.5? What does that say? Psalm 19.5 says, Which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. And let's go to John chapter 3 and verse 29, please. John 3.29 says, He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This, my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. So after the groom steps out from the bridal chamber and makes the announcement that the marriage has been consummated, then that's when there's going to be so much shouting in heaven. It's going to be really exciting. Miss Fay, let's bring this to a close today with Matthew 22, verses 2 through 4. Matthew 22, beginning with verse 2. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. So here we have the scripture that tells us the marriage had taken place. It was now official. We are one with Jesus. And that's the third step, except for the shouting and the rejoicing that's going on. And most likely, this ceremony would last at least seven days, according to the Jewish custom. And there in heaven, it may last for seven years. I don't know just how long, but it is going to be a grand and glorious time and nobody is going to be left out of the party. Everybody in heaven is going to get to uh, enter into this time of rejoicing. And the groom will make certain that his bride is getting to participate in all of the rejoicing and all of the excitement that's going on. It's going to be an awesome time when we get to heaven and married to Jesus. Do you have prayer requests? Please call or write to us.
You can support Revelation of the Word by first praying for God's anointing to be on this ministry. If you feel led to send a financial offering, you can send your gift to Revelation of the Word Ministries, 205 Liberty Lane, Madison, Tennessee, 37115. Everyone is invited to visit Revelation of the Word Church. Call, email, or write to Neils for more information. Now, back to Revelation of the Word. I have just been talking about the fact that worship is occurring in heaven, and then there's going to be rejoicing. And that's really a part of worship as well. Whenever we offer up thanksgiving and praise, and, and we're shouting and just giving honor and acknowledging the presence of God and who God is and thanking the Lord Jesus for what he's done. All of that is a part of worship. And you know what? We do not have to wait until we get to heaven to begin to offer up that kind of worship. In fact, the Bible says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, we have the Holy Spirit right here with us, and he makes it possible for us to worship in spirit. And we know that the word of God is truth. So as we're offering up praise and worship under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, God is receiving that praise and worship just as much as if we were already there kneeling before his throne. So I encourage you, get out of your shyness. Begin to rejoice in the Lord. Yes. Tell him how much you love him and how much you appreciate what's going to take place whenever we all get to heaven, how that we will get to see Jesus and be married to Jesus and actually get to dwell with him from that point forward. That's going to be so exciting. So go ahead and begin to thank God just for that opportunity that we have as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I assure you, blessings will come to you here and now. And remember, folks, God loves you, and we do too. We really, really do. 